everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make the impossible box. So I've got three different sizes that I'm going to share with you today. These are the ones I've done during my Facebook Live and you all really enjoyed it and you've enjoyed making those sizes but I did say I had another one so I'm going to show you that size today along with these ones. So you're going to get three boxes in this tutorial and I also have another one but I'm going to keep that for a separate tutorial because that one's a little bit different. So if you haven't heard of the impossible box they were really popular about two years ago. I actually have had a very big box from Marks and Spencers and I took it apart. It was a big burgundy one and I'm sure I've shared it on the Facebook page and if I can find it I'll link it into my blog. It's a really fun style and the reason it's called impossible is because when you look at it it looks impossible but it's obviously not. There's lots of other YouTubers that have done some great videos as well so if you just type in impossible box you will see those and obviously get some different sizes. Okay so this is what it is. It looks like a nice box and then you just pull the top so it's really easy for the person that you give this to to you know work out because whenever you see a lid you just go to pull it off but as you lift it it opens like this and there is lots of room I actually put a candle in this during the Facebook live and then you just close it down on itself it's very very clever so again that's the pink one just so you can kind of see all the workings there and I've got templates for everything, so it's um, you know easy for you to follow. And then these are super cute, really, really nice ones here. And again, just pull up the sides and you can see inside. Brilliant. They are just little genius boxes and there's the orange one there as well. Okay, so let me show you how to make these. Okay, so I've got everything here. The papers I've used on all of the boxes is from my Made to Surprise range and it's the party paper pad. And then I'm also going to decorate this one with Jerry the Giraffe and I've done a little rosette and again I'll talk through that when we get to it. So first of all I'm going to show you how to make this size. Okay, so if I just get rid of all of this underneath, we can go through that in a moment. Okay, so for that size there, you'll want a piece of 11.5 by 12 cardstock. This one here uses smaller cardstock along with the other size I'm going to show you as well. So if you don't have 12 by 12, fast forward and you'll see some other sizes that you can make using your standard cardstock. This is the template that I've done here and I'm going to just go through this as I score everything and when we go to cut I think it will make a lot more sense. Now I did say in the live, I think these boxes work better if you've got a slightly lighter weight cardstock, so around the 200 GSM. I did use 240 and that seemed to work okay, but I think if you start creeping up to the 270, 300 GSM, you're putting a lot of pressure on the top here. You can see this folds back over on itself and then you've got a lot of folds and bits and pieces going on there. Um, you may, you know, put a bit too much strain on it. Have a play around, you know, you know your card stocks that you've got and um, if you've made these before, then, you know, that's great. So what you want to do, first of all, is along the 11 and a half inch side, we're going to score at two and three quarters five and a half, eight and a quarter, and 11. Okay, so we've just scored these four score lines here. Then you wanna pop it along the 12 inch side and you're gonna score at two and three quarters, eight and a quarter, nine and five eighths, and 11. So you can see what we've just done, this score line, this one, this one, and this one. Then what you also want to do is flip it over and just score that 11 inch one again because we're actually going to be folding that opposite to all the others. Okay. And now we can fold and burnish all of the score lines. So with these ones here, so this is just folded this one here and then I'm going to do this one, this one. But this one that we just flipped and I told you to score the other way, you want to fold it that way. I'm going to do a bit of cutting and stuff on this in a minute, but just so you get an idea. Because usually you just fold and burnish all your score lines in the same kind of direction. But that one you do want to kind of, kind of start to work it the opposite way. It just makes it easier at the end. So again, I'm just doing all of the score lines along the 11 and a half side. Because these are the sides of the box. Like so. Okay. And then that one at the top, so there's our half inch tab and that one's going to come over. But what we want to do first of all, you've got your half inch tab on the right hand side here. And then you've got one, two, three sections here. One, two, three. The top two you want to fold away from yourself. Okay, 
pop it back into your board here so there's the 11 and a half inch there and we're going to put some little markers now you might find it better to use a pencil you can mark it with that that's what I used on the video but I'm going to use the pencil for today's tutorial and you just want to put a little marker at one and three eighths four and one eighth six and seven eighths and nine and five eighths okay so what we've done is we've marked the halfway point on each of these rectangles so it's these ones here that we're just working in we folded these two away from us they're underneath if you now turn it so that this is now facing you and you want to grab some scissors so I'm going to use my snips here and what we're doing now so if I just fold that over that's those two and now I've got it facing me so we've now got our half inch tab on the left hand side we're now going to cut across from the pencil mark to that score line here which is this one so this black where I've you know colored it in we're actually cutting that away so from that pencil mark if you want to do a pencil line from this pencil mark to this point so you know you're going to get that nice and straight you can do it's this bit's quite important and is if you are slightly off or you've cut maybe maybe you cut down slightly past that score line you've cut maybe a little bit to the left of the pencil mark what it will mean is it will slightly alter the closure gap here you know we want that to be as small as possible if it's a bit bigger it doesn't matter but that's why it will happen so if some of you are wondering you know why is my hole a little bit bigger or it's maybe very very tight you may have cut you know not right on there you may be more to the the right hand side here so that's just something to look out for and so now what we want to do so we've removed that one now we need to remove this one here so we need to cut down this score line so I'm cutting down this one here and keep the cardstock underneath, really, you know, pinch it together so you don't want it shifting at all. And then you're going to cut across again from that pencil mark all the way down to there. And you can see it just falls away and then you know you've got a, a good cut. Again, so we've just removed that one. Now we're going to do that one and that one. So again, exactly the same process. You're cutting down the score line, the straight one. And then you're cutting from your pencil mark across to join them up like so and then that last one okay so that's what we've got then this very end bit here you can see I've got it here we're just going to remove it so just cut down and take that away like so okay so if I just lay that next to it there you can see what we've just done we've got the same now what we also need to do is remove this rectangle here so I'm just going to flip it around and just take out this one okay and you can also just cut a little wedge on there and there just so it's easier to stick together and we don't get anything overhanging so now if I open this up and open up the template these have obviously all been cut away and you can see now We've got all of these pieces, just the same as our template. I'll take photos of this. I'll write the measurements in here as well, the score lines, and that will all be on my blog. But that's what we've got. And also, you need to cut up the bottom score lines as well. So I'm just going to grab my longer scissors. We'll rub those pencil marks out as well, but just cut up now all of these to that first score line. Okay, so that's that one now all ready to sit down. But I'm also going to go through the measurements of the other two because the sticking together is, is pretty much the same across all of them. So once you get it, I can kind of speed those bits up. So now if you want to make this smaller one, this is really sweet. I've got my pattern paper there ready. So this is the template. So this is using one piece of 10 and a half by eight and a quarter. So I think this would be a popular one for those of you that have a lot of the smaller cardstock. So this one here... I'm using this lovely yellow colour. So what you want to do is along the ten and a half side, you want to score it two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. Okay. Then rotate it along the eight and a quarter side, and again you want to score it two and a half, four and a half, five and three quarters, and then seven. Okay. Now again, flip it over and score that seven one again, because that's that top one that you're going to fold away. So you can now fold that one towards you. Got the tab there on the right hand side. But all those other ones you will fold and burnish, you know, as you normally would.
Again, there's that one facing towards you. Here's our half inch tab on the right hand side. The first two you want to fold away from yourself, so you should have three sections now in front of you. Pop it back in your scoreboard and we're going to do those little markers again. So I'm going to grab my pencil and we're marking halfway between each of those rectangles, okay? So the first one you want to score at one and a quarter. Sorry, you want to put a little pencil mark at one and a quarter. Then you want to do at three and three quarters. Then at six and a quarter and then at eight and three quarters, okay? Then you're going to turn it so it's facing you again and we're going to cut across all of those sections. So I will bring in this again, I think it helps. I'm going to fold the two away from me and I'm going to turn it like this. So again we've now got the half inch tab on our left hand side and I'm going to remove this one here. So from that pencil mark I'm going to cut across like so and then I'm going to cut down this score line and then I'm going to go to the next pencil mark and again I'm going to cut down and just repeat that just as I did with the blue one before. Again this little rectangle at the end here, remember you're cutting through two pieces so really pinch the card together but you're removing that. So there you can see again I've got the same as my template. Open it up, rub out those pencil marks and you will have something like this again. We also need to take away this one here, so I'm just going to cut that one away and I'm going to take a little wedge off of the tab and then I'm going to cut up all of these score lines along the bottom, again just up to that first score line. That one's going to fold towards us and we're all ready to stick that one down. Okay, then the other size I want to show you again like I said we'll stick them all at the same time is this one here which is going to use two pieces of letter paper size or your A4. Here's the template here. So I've already done one because you're going to do two in exactly the same way so that one's ready. So you want two pieces of 11 by 8 and a quarter. I've done that size again because everybody can you know um, whether you've got the letter paper size or A4 you can do this. So along the 8 and a quarter inch side you want to score at 4 and eight and then along the 11 inch side you want to score at four, six, eight and ten. Okay again flip it over and score that ten on the other side. Flip it back and then fold that towards you and then all the others again you will fold and burnish as you normally would. Okay, so again, now I've got a quarter inch tab here because I wanted to get the most out of this paper and this is on the right hand side. So you're going to fold the top two away from you, pop it in here, pop it back into our scoreboard and we're going to put a pencil mark at two and six. Okay, turn it so it's facing you. Again, I'll bring in the template. So I'm folding away the top two. Flip it this way so it's facing me. So now we've got the quarter inch tab on the left and we're going to cut away and do exactly the same. I'm going to use my larger scissors here so I'm going to cut right down like so and then you've just got the one score line through the middle here so again nice and neat right down and then from the pencil mark right across and then you've just got this small little section here to cut down. Okay, and then we just need to turn it now this way and we want to remove this corner here which I've got just down here and then take little wedges. So hopefully by me doing these three all together and you know seeing the different sizes but you can see the process is exactly the same and then you just want to cut up that one there. Open it up and you can see we've got this effect here but you need to do that twice you've got two pieces. Okay so now we want to stick them together so these two you'll stick exactly the same way and I'll do the one with the two pieces in a minute. So first of all what you want to do, I'm going to bring in my glue here, is you want to add your glue to this tab here but you want to make sure you've folded this one over. 
turn the whole thing over, fold over this one side and just make sure you burnish that well there and this is where you might start to see any cracking and stuff if you're using a, a weight of card that's you know maybe just too thick and then fold this one over and they should line up and stick down on top of each other. I'm just going to pull that one up a little bit there whilst I hold it in place and just re-burnish that a little bit there. Okay, so that's that one. And I'm going to do the same on this one. So you're just going to add your glue all down here. Again, make sure you fold that piece over. Turn the whole thing over, bringing this one round. And then bring this one over. Again, it will all lie down perfectly. Okay. I'm going to then just pop those two to one side and bring in the green one because this is exactly the same but all we've got to do first of all is make it like it's just one big piece of card. So I'm going to pop my glue on there and also on this one here. Okay, and you just want to lay your card over the two of them so it all lines up. So now we've got that one big piece. We just treat this now just as we did with those two there. So again, I'm going to just pop my glue just on that one. Remember to fold that forward. And then just thought actually with that one, because we've done the two, you actually want to stick that on the other side. So you want to stick that over like that because you're actually going to be folding this towards you. I am going to put pattern paper over that so it doesn't matter that it's lifted a little bit. But you actually want to fold that piece over the top and then fold it down. I'm going to be careful that that glue doesn't stick inside there, but I'll cover all that in a moment. And then just flip it over, that one, and then that one, like so. Now we've got our three boxes. So I'm going to open this one up. So I'm going to stick my sides in first. So I'm going to do this one, then the opposite side, then the back one, and then the front one. And that way you just get the continuation of the card stock there on the front that wraps all the way around. And then I'm just going to go inside there with my ruler and just push down all of the base pieces so they stick together. Okay, so now we've got this piece here. Again with this one, here's the back seam. So I'm going to stick my sides in first. Not too worried that they don't stick initially, just get the glue on them. The back one. And this will really reinforce it now as well. So if you do want to put a bottle of something in there, maybe some, you know, some heavy perfumes, things like that, it will hold it. Again, flip it over and just go in there with my ruler. Okay, and then you're doing exactly the same with this one. Okay, so there are the three boxes and you can already now start to see all the shape coming together. So I'm so I'm now going to do the yellow one. So it's up to you. You might want to add your mats and layers now. You might want to also add any mats and layers before we stick it all together. But I find it's still easy to do. So I'm actually just going to take a little wedge off of this one. I don't know if I said that earlier. Probably not because I haven't done it on them. Just take a little wedge off. And what's going to happen is that's going to stick inside of here. But we're going to do that when we've closed it. So what you want to do, it should just automatically, because the way we folded it, all of these score lines inside are all pointing inwards. So when you go to push that, can you see it all just naturally comes down on itself, like so. It's really, really cool. And now we want to add some glue to that and pop it underneath there. And that way you get a really nice closure because you can push that, you know, bring that right around like so. And that's going to be at the back as well. But can you see how cool that looks? And that will pull up nicely. So I'm going to bring in this glue. The reason I use this one, it's just a really quick grab. So it's great for your tabs. 
the um, my Kalau glue is just really good for adding strength to the base and for mats and layers. So I'm just popping that there and then just make sure everything lines up and bring that one across till that's stuck. Like so, and now I can just pull that up and it pops up. You can get inside there, pop the treats in and then just push that down. And you know it will fit because it's, you know, you glued it, you know, outside. So cool, love these, really, really fun. Again, just pull it up. The more you do it as well, just, you know, just work it a little bit and it will, you know, it moves fine. So again, with this one here, just make sure they all push inwards and then it will fold down like so. Okay, again, I'm just gonna take a little wedge off of those. Pop a little bit of glue on there. And then just feed that one carefully under there, like so. And again, with that one, I can just pull it up. You can see all your space inside. And again, it just closes down perfectly, nice and straight. And then this one, again, push them all inwards. Once you get it into that shape, then it will, you know, it will stay there. And again, we just got that smaller tab, but it's enough to hold it all together. And there's that little bit there where I lifted it earlier, but my pattern paper is going to cover that in a minute. But I think that's a great size. I really like that size. I think that's going to get used a lot at Christmas time. And again, you can see how you get into that one. And again. Close it all down, like so. So now I'm just gonna go through the mats and layers and then I can just kind of whiz through that bit. So for this one here, I've cut these pieces and it's up to you. You might want to do them so that you have, I, I've done all of mine so that the pattern paper covers all of this section, even with the lid closing. But if you're worried that your lid isn't gonna go over, maybe you've got a thicker paper, maybe you're using more of a cardstock, then you might not wanna do it this size. So I'm gonna give you the size I've got, but I'll also give you another size. So these are two and a half by five and a quarter. You'll want four pieces. But if you want to cover it when the lid's closed, so like so, then you would want four pieces that are that same width of two and a half, but these would be by four and a quarter, okay? That just means that when you lift the lid up, this would be plain, in my case, plain blue, which still looks nice, okay? But I have done them, you can see on here, I've done it the whole height, okay? And then I've got these little pieces here which are gonna cover all of this section. And these are again, two and a half, because you're bringing it in slightly, by three quarters and they're gonna stick on all four sides. Now you can also cover the triangles on the top as well. You just need to work out you know, your size square. I imagine you're gonna to wanna to probably do something around, I would come down as far as two and a quarter squared. So you get that equal border on all three, um, all four triangles. So yeah, if you've done two and a quarter squared, I might do it actually and show you and then just cut it into fours, then that would go on the top there, okay? So that's for that one. For this little one here, you'll want four pieces that are one and three quarters by two and a quarter. But again, if you just want to cover the bottoms, or in this case, because of the way it is, you might want to keep that plain in color and just cover this one here. But if you did want to cover the bottom one with the lid down, then you're going to want something that is, oh gosh, I'd do five eighths of an inch by two and a quarter. But like I said, I've done those sizes. And then to cover the tops here, I've got four pieces of one, by two and a quarter. And I've just done this little sentiment here, which I've done on all of them there, which I thought worked really well. And it just says a gift for you. And it's from an old Stampendous one. So I'll be adding that onto them. And then lastly, I've got this one to cover the green one here. So I've got again, four pieces of one and three quarters by three and three quarters. But again, if you just wanna cover this part here, you'll wanna do three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, and then for the top piece there on all four sides, it is three quarters by three and three quarters. Again, all of those measurements will be on my blog, but I'm now gonna get these all stuck down and then I'll show you them all finished.
so there are my finished boxes. So there's the small little yellow one. Really cute, love that little sentiment. And you just lift it up again. You can see all that lovely pattern paper and you can get inside. This one here, I haven't done the top of this one. I'll show you the sizes for that one. But I would just reduce whatever your size is here. So this is four by four, so I would do three and five eighths of an inch squared and then cut it into fours. And that will give you your four mat layers there. And again, just open it up and you've got all that space inside and then it closes perfectly. And then those are the two I showed you before without the tops, but then this one here I have actually covered the top there and that was using a piece of two and a quarter square and again just cut so yeah just reduce it by three three eighths of an inch whatever the size is of this reduce it by three eighths and that would be your mat layers and then I've just finished it with a rosette there which was a piece of one by 12 it was just the longest length you can have really scored it every quarter of an inch and you can see I've got them on those ones as well and I've just put galloping by to say happy birthday and that's using the amazing animal stamp set from my collection as well. I think they're so much fun. Again, just opening that one up there, you can see, you really get to like appreciate all the, I guess the mat layers, the, all the pattern paper. When you actually open it, you can really see just how the box works and everything. So yeah, okay, so that's my three sizes of the impossible box, which is not impossible. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you have, if you can please give me a thumbs up, it's really appreciated. If you consider subscribing so you get to see more fun tutorials and I'll be back very soon with another video. Bye.